Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. 2022 Georgia Plus International Environment Forum is being taken place. Welcome all of you. I am Moon Sori, your host. Hosted by Minister of Environment, UNESCO, and Jeju Special Self-Governing Province, and organized by Korea Environment Corporation, Jeju ICC, the steering committee of the forum under the theme of plastics and biodiversity. So today's forum will cover environmental issues caused by plastics and talk about how to reduce negative impacts on the ecosystem. And following the previous year, we are holding this year's event in Jeju again. As its name speaks, the forum refrains from using plastics, paper, and single-use products. Thereby, we can take care of the environment. And your engagement will be very much appreciated during the forum. And you can find booklets at the lobby or scan the QR code and download them. And today we have many online participants as well. If you have any questions for speakers, please leave them on YouTube 20 minutes before the end of the session. Then we will aggregate them and deliver them to speakers so that our speakers can give you answers. Then from now on, we'd like to start session one. Under the theme of plastic pollution management and biodiversity conservation, we are going to share ideas and in opinions. And Director Jung Dae-yeon of Asia Climate Change Education Center will moderate the session. Please, now the floor is yours, Director Jung. 네, 그럼 지금부터 진행 부탁드립. Please go ahead. 안녕하십니까. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As have been introduced, I'm Director Jung Dae-yeon of Asia Climate Change Education Center. I majored in environment socialism. So it is about studying environment in the perspective of society. And I retired, and now I'm working at Asia Climate Change Education Center under the Jeju province. It is an education center. So currently, I'm working as director of the center. So as you know, it is very honored to serve as the moderator for this session. The organizing committee asked me to speak in English, so including myself, all the presenters will speak in English and share ideas as well in English too. Yeah, before we start this session, uh, I would like to <coughs> uh, uh, give some notice to you about uh, how to run uh, this session. The first one as already has been introduced. The theme of this session is uh, the management of plastic pollution and the conservation of the biodiversity. According to the uh, little interpretation, the theme of this session is just uh, the relationship between many, uh, plastic uh, pollution and uh, biodiversity. However, in real sense, I think this is not the simple linear relationship, just uh, the uh, plastic pollution, how to impact uh, on the conservation of uh, biodiversity. And the second uh, notice is this session uh, has the limited time. The presentation from 10 to 11.40, we have invited five speakers from uh, domestic scholars and overseas experts. And after that, uh, we have the uh, uh, panelist discussion from 11.40 to 20, just uh, 20 minutes. So uh, do, uh, the speakers, five speakers, and the uh, two panelists in the discussion uh, session, then when using uh, this uh, time given to us, I think the speakers, I think each speaker can have 15 minutes for presentation. Uh, I would like to keep 
this uh, time given to you. If you use longer than 15 minutes, I think what will happen to this session, uh, you can guess. That means some speakers, yeah, we have to miss some <laughs> speakers. Eh? Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, another uh, uh, notice is the simultaneous interpretation between English and Korean uh, is available. Or as uh, you have been informed, you can use uh, the channels uh, one or two according to uh, your preference. And this session uh, will run as a hybrid in-person and virtual workshop. Uh, workshop. Uh, we are attended here physically, and many uh, people, I think, are on uh, uh, internet. Uh, so now uh, we start the first speakers. Uh, Mr. Junu, Junu uh, Suresta, she is an uh, environmental expert and current is working at World Bank Korea office. The topics she uh, will deliver is international cooperation and the challenge for solving plastic wastes in Asia. Uh, okay, then uh, we can meet her on screen. Thank you, Director uh, Dayun, uh, for the screen. Okay, we got her. All right. Yeah. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, please keep the 15 minutes in your mind, all right? I will. Yeah, thank I will. You. I'll yeah. speak as fast as possible. Um, thank you for the introduction, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, though virtually I would have loved to be in Jeju instead. But um, I'm Junu, uh, Junu Shrashta. I, uh, I'm a senior environmental specialist at the World Bank. Uh, I cover East Asia and Pacific uh, pollution issues. Uh, right now, we're focusing a lot on plastics, so this is very uh, timely. And it is wonderful to see um, participants from different countries where we have worked together. So um, I'm looking forward to learning more and sharing more ideas. Um, should I uh, share my screen now? Okay, um, uh, slightly different from what the, <coughs> from the uh, stated title, but the content is 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 not uh, uh, does not differ much. So I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, challenges of plastic problems in the ASEAN countries and the role of the World Bank um, in, in uh, tackling this challenge. So before um, you know, before we even start, why is this? important, all the documents, all the um, publications and literature coming out in the past couple of years about plastic pollution in the world has really uh, shown that waste management and plastics uh, is a problem. Uh, as you can see uh, in, in the graph shown here, um, in lower, uh, lower uh, income country and, uh, sorry, in a uh, lower middle income country, uh, you can see the waste uh, generation is increasing drastically from 2016 to 2050. Um, so, so in lower income countries and lower middle income countries, the increase in generation of waste is an issue. And you can also notice that in most of these countries, um, as the waste is generated, it's not really managed properly. They're uh, managed in open dumps or burnt. So this is of concern. Um, mm. Next, now uh, excuse me, Ms. Juno. I'm sorry yes. for interrupting you. Sure, sure. Uh, we are requested to show uh, your presentation data. Oh, you, can, you're not can, seeing yeah, my presentation? Yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you load your PPT on screen? It's, it's being shared. You don't see it? No, no, no one can see it. Uh. Okay, let me let me try it again. Oh, uh, because I, I was thinking you, you could share it, uh, see it already. I 
I think it's a technical is, problem. Is this better? Huh? Is this better? No, not available yet. Yeah. Oh, okay, we got it. Thank you. Sorry about yeah, that. Please go ahead. Yeah. <coughs> Apologies for that. So now focusing on the um, region itself, as you can see, uh, the last block on the uh, bar chart, East Asian Pacific, is, does show rapid increase in waste generation um, amongst the other regions in, uh, in the world. And on the graph on the right-hand side shows that significant proportion, at least from a couple of the studies we looked at, uh, from 7, 16 to 24% of this waste is actually plastic. So given that plastic is a significant proportion of this waste, and also, um, you know, long lasting in the environment with multi multitude of other issues, uh, to focus on this uh, pollution uh, is of importance. So you can see here about uh, half of the waste in the region is uncollected. And even, our, <clears throat> even of the waste that is collected, very little gets recycled, treated, and managed properly. Um, so this eventually gets to the environment and we have multitude of, like I said, issues um, that we all know about coming from pollution, plastic pollution. And um, East Asia and Pacific is of a concern because of the waste, amount of waste that's increasing in the region because of urbanization. And also um, it, as shown in the graph, uh, it, when looking at number of uh, rivers in the world, three or three uh, more than I think, uh, these are the, the top most uh, rivers um, uh, sending the most amount of plastic into the oceans. And the top ones we have are Philippines, Malaysia, India, top three. Um, so uh, I focus a lot on uh, Philippines um, in Asian Pacific. So uh, it, is, it is of interest and also of a lot of um, uh, importance because if pollution, plastic pollution is tackled in East Asian Pacific in major countries like Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, a uh, plastic problem in the world can uh, uh, can be reduced, can be uh, managed to a certain extent. So it's it's with hope that I speak today. So um, as I uh, alluded to before, you know, plastic problem is not just uh, you know an eyesore. It has tangible problems in economic sectors. We have seen that plastics have caused um, uh, reduction in uh, income in tourism, fishing, and shipping in epic countries about 10.8 billion in 2015. Same with ecosystem and diversity. We've all seen pictures of turtles getting tackled in ghost um, fishery, uh, fisheries gear. And cost to the marine ecosystem is estimated to be at least 13 billion per year. Um, and <clears throat> And also in food security, a lot of um, uh, people in the region depend on uh, fish uh, protein. And we see that a uh, 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 significant amount of fish products in the, uh, in the region have shown microplastics. So this is of health concern as well. So what is the bank doing um, uh, to tackle this waste, support the countries, uh, uh, respond to this? Uh, plastic pollution issue. We are looking at this problem at the regional as well as country level. Um, all the countries shown in the map here are being sort of, uh, are being, uh, we are working with all the countries shown on the map to tackle the plastic waste. Um, and we have uh, accumulated over $9 million uh, of uh, trust from resources to do analytical work uh, in these countries. Our view is to uh, set up a strong analytical base, understand the problem, set up the policies, and then uh, look into the investments to reduce uh, the plastic pollution. So this is the approach we're trying, looking into metrics, diagnostics of plastic problems, what kind of plastic problems there are. I'll give a short example of Philippines uh, later on. And then uh, type of uh, policy support that are needed for each of the countries. 
like um, plastics roadmap, national action plan for plastics, depending on the country status and capacity. And also then finally figuring out what kind of investments may it be um, uh, sorting facilities, recycling facilities uh, that are needed in these countries to, be, uh, to set those up uh, with the necessary investments, loans and grants. So that is the process we're taking in the World Bank in the East Asia and Pacific. So going from our overview to some of the tangible sort of uh, work that we have done, we have supported at the regional level um, uh, <clears throat> to bring out a, a regional action plan for plastic waste. As we know, plastic waste is a regional problem um, coming from different, like you saw in the uh, slide before, plastic waste coming from different countries into the ocean. Similarly, waste plastic waste trade, uh, one country, um, uh, one country uh, sort of uh, work and achievement in plastic is not sufficient. It has to be a regional, uh, regional, um, uh, regional effort in this uh, in this matter. So we worked with the ASEAN um, to come to develop a regional action plan to tackle marine litter, and it identified. It was two years sort of a program and identified. Uh, waste reduction, uh, collection, and recycling as a key element um, that needs to be looked into. And divided, we um, categorized the kind of um, approach that is needed to tackle this waste issue. So policy support and planning, research, innovation, and capacity building, public awareness, education, and outreach, and private sector engagement. All these are needed in a concerted sort of manner to make a dent in the plastic pollution uh, in, in, in the region. So another regional document that is that may be of interest here is we did a study in three countries, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines. And speakers here can add more to it. What we found was very interesting, uh, um, less than 25% of uh, recyclable resin is actually um, uh, recycled and uh, recycled uh, in, in these countries. This is not just a waste problem, uh, like uh, we mentioned earlier on. It's actually an economic problem because 75% of resin that could have been recycled and uh, finances uh, that could be brought back into the economy, about six billion per year across these three countries, are is currently untapped. So a lot of business development opportunities are there for both for public sector to facilitate the policies and private sector to um, get this opportunity and build businesses uh, focusing on waste management. So this um, shows the regional action, uh, the ASEAN region, uh, regional action plan against uh, marine litter. Uh, as mentioned, is divided into four categories. Um, focusing on reducing the inputs into the system, uh, enhancing collection and minimizing leakage, and finally, creating value for waste reuse. So just a couple examples, for uh, we have guidelines, what's uh, highlighted our need for guiding principles for phasing out single-use plastics. Uh, some work that we're supporting um, this, uh, this uh, phasing out single-use plastic are in the Philippines, uh, also in Vietnam, um, also highlighted our need for um, best practice manual for uh, minimum standards and technical requirements for plastic labeling and packaging. And if we go into collection and uh, minimizing leakage, uh, enhancing uh, uh, common methodologies for assessment and monitoring of marine litter, which is a big gap in all the countries we've seen really the data, uh, a lack of data on what is collected, um, what is recycled, and what is leaked into the environment uh, is fast. And without the data, we, uh, the planning, uh, planning suffers. Um, and also to highlight um, the platform, regional platform for knowledge sharing and investments for innovations are also highlighted in this regional action plan. I highlight these because for these uh, actions to uh, bear fruit, the regional collaboration is needed and also support from all the countries uh, is needed. 
So this is um, going back to um, specific country level, sort of um, a, a snapshot of country level support the World Bank is providing in the Philippines. Um, for example, we're uh, moving from uh, analytical support to policy support and finally to the investments. Um, we have done plastic monitoring in the Pacific River as a short uh, result I'll uh, show. Uh, to really see what kind of plastic is a problem. You know, we can't tackle probably all the uh, plastic issues, all kinds of plastics, to put our money where the most um, you know, results can be gained. And uh, policy option analysis, what kind of policies, from EPR to fees to tax, what can be most suitable for a country like uh, Philippines? That has been studies. Um, like mentioned, the market study on plastic uh, circularity showed that recycling can bear a lot of uh, economic uh, opportunities in the country and more, fi uh, more economic sort of returns could ha uh, can be gained by uh, increasing recycling in the Philippines as well. And at a local level, we did soil waste management um, uh, in, uh, assessment of SWM municipal investment plans to see what are the gaps what are the opportunities? What are the uh, actions that are already being done at the municipal level? For example, uh, collection of uh, efficiency of collection of waste, uh, private sector um, uh, 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 approaches such as uh, building uh, plastic products into chairs, uh, into road products, um, can that be upscaled? Those kinds of analysis were done on the uh, SWM uh, investment plan analysis. And finally, we're supporting currently development of single-use plastic phase-out roadmap. Um, and I would like to add that um, we have uh, just completed a study on assessment of EPR studies, uh, EPR system in the Philippines, and what Philippines can learn from it um, as it moves towards uh, um, implementation of EPR bill that just got um, approved earlier this month. So a uh, snapshot of the field work we, uh, we conducted on top 10 plastics found in the environment. We did field study uh, sampling as well as drone studies to collect this data. And um, this is very interesting, like I said, uh, as you see, all the uh, single, uh, the most polluting, most leaked plastics what, that we saw along the Pasig River, that is the most polluting river that uh, feeds plastics into the ocean, is single-use plastics, um, Sandu and Labo bags, the wrappers. Um, uh, me, Mr. Juno, I'm yes. sorry for interrupting you. You are sure. already behind the uh, schedule. Uh, okay, will you I'll wrap up. Go to the conclusion. Sure, of course, right. of course. So knowing this, uh, we are doing couple, uh, a number of analytic, uh, um, I'll, uh, let me focus a bit on what we are doing right now, uh, on um, analytical study, regional analytical study on innovations through the Korea office here. What we focus on here is, as we noted in the Philippines and also in other countries, there are a number of innovations that are happening on the ground and that are not, uh, that are not replicated and scaled up. Um, so there should be an opportunity for this uh, smaller innovations, SMEs that are tackling, looking at plastic waste on the ground to be replicated and investments for them to be uh, upscaled. So we're focusing on that uh, um, as one of the, uh, one of the uh, analytical work we're doing. Another key work we're doing is CMAP, which is a regional level work investment program covering all the countries in the region um, to really bring, bring out our, our lessons learned from all the countries and sharing of lessons. Um, comp some of the main uh, components in the uh, investment are um, harmonization, strengthening of policies and institutions for plastic circularity, and also um, establishing regional through ASEAN uh, establishing regional platforms to promote innovations, knowledge, and partnerships for plastic circularity. This project is being implemented by the ASEAN, and um, there's there's a big opportunities for the countries and Korea itself to participate and really uh, make make efforts into uh, share knowledge uh, in uh, and build capacity 
uh, to uh, improve plastic circularity throughout the region by participating in this uh, in this program and in these knowledge platforms that uh, the ASEAN is uh, setting up currently. The project just went to uh, just got approved and is currently under implementation. So again, um, these are the elements of regional action plan that the uh, project is uh, uh, is uh, addressing. Um, so in closing, um, what I'd like to share is plastics and waste issues in the region is is going to, is going to increase. So um, the time to act is now. And um, overall concern about plastic is not just um, cosmetic, it's environmental, health, and economic, or with larger repercussions on um, uh, GDP growth eventually as well. Um, and also World, World Bank, as you see, has been doing regional and country level support leading for analytics to investments. But for this to be successful at a country level, at the regional level, sharing of knowledge from countries that have capacity to other countries where plastic problem is increasing is of uh, importance and also to adapt technologies that are there in these developed countries in the region in a way that can be adopted uh, and con context speci uh, specific to the developing country is necessary. Um, and in this way, technological policy and implementation know-how of countries with advanced waste management system will be valuable. And studies like we just finished on EPR knowledge and sharing of capacity would be, uh, would be valuable and to be replicated on other uh, uh, plastic waste management uh, approaches as well. I end there. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, and I, um, I'll, I'll welcome any questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Juno. So the one important thing we have got from uh, her presentation, uh, then her presentation is composed of, first uh, she introduced the, the status of uh, plastic uh, emission, particularly in uh, Southeast area. And uh, secondly, she presented the impact of plastic pollution on economy, ecosystem, and food uh, security. Next, uh, she introduced the World Bank's role in relation to the plastic pollution. Particularly, uh, she uh, emphasized the uh, World Bank's role. Uh, the first one is analysis. Second one is uh, development of policy in relation to plastic pollution. And finally, she introduced a desirable framework for regional action plan. Uh, however, then uh, she used seven minutes more. Uh, then if this is accumulated, <laughs> we can think what will happen. The last speaker, we have to skip the last speaker. So this will be very good reference for the next speakers, OK? Yeah. Or the next uh, uh, speaker, uh, Professor Zhang Yongchul. Zhang Yongchul, uh, he is a professor at the Department of Environmental Engineering, Chungnam National University. Currently, uh, he is serving as the president and a chair of international affairs of Korean Society of Waste Management. Okay, then uh, the topic of his presentation is Sustainable Plastic Waste Management by EPR uh, in Korea, uh, particularly uh, the, with reference to achievement, key factors, and the future decision. Okay, then, yeah, please, Professor Zhang, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Yongcho Zhang uh, from Chungnam National University. It's a, it's a great honor uh, for me to present uh, today. So I'd like to talk about how to manage 
uh, flushed waste uh, by EPR uh, system in Korea, specifically uh, focusing on some key uh, factor, successful factors and lessons and uh, future uh, direction and challenges. So, um, so this is an uh, overview of my presentation today. Uh, uh, so as you can see, uh, first, uh, so what, what is uh, EPR? Before we get into the plastic uh, uh, waste, what is uh, EPR? So EPR is uh, extended uh, producer responsibility, meaning producers take more responsibility of their products uh, from manufacturing to uh, treatment, recycling, uh, or, or disposal uh, stage. So uh, this uh, EPR concept uh, has uh, uh, has a very uh, uh, popularity around the world. As you can see in this uh, uh, table, this EPR concept was adopted in 1990, uh, especially uh, uh, in, in Europe. And as you can see, uh, there is a dramatic increase trend of EPR system for plastic, electronic uh, waste, battery, uh, fluorescence lamp, uh, etc. So uh, uh, there is uh, around the world, as you can see on this uh, uh, figure, there is an increasing uh, trend of mandatory or emerging or even voluntary uh, EPR uh, program around the world. Uh, in Korea, uh, this uh, EPR started in 2003. So we have about 20 years experiences. And uh, 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 for uh, uh, packaging uh, uh, material, such as you have uh, metal cans, uh, glass bottles, and, and, and plastic uh, uh, bottles, and um, uh, uh, some kind of single-use vinyl gloves and, and even wet wipers, and is to keep adding this uh, uh, EPR item. Also, there is uh, some uh, uh, lubricants, tires, and battery lamps, uh, electronic uh, devices, and things like that. And uh, uh, in Korea, uh, by the EPR system, um, target recycling rates for each item is annually assigned by the government so that uh, producers must comply uh, those uh, uh, target or mandatory recycling uh, rate. So for example, here pet bottles uh, has a nine, uh, 80%, so meaning pet bottle manufacturers uh, should achieve 80% recycling rate uh, out of pet butter that put onto the mark put onto the market. So uh, in in this one is uh, uh, 2020 to this year, and um, uh, the uh, EPR uh, uh, system. How it works? Uh, EPR system in, in in Korea. This is a whole like a. Uh, system uh, 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 floor. Uh, if uh, manufacturer, there is a, a product floor uh, from uh, manufacturing uh, product going to the distributor consumer, and the after use, there is a, some waste floor, and also there is a, a supporting a financial uh, supporting floor. So this is a whole uh, kind of uh, 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 EPR system in, in Korea. For example, consumer also should play a key role of collection and recycling because you, uh, you usually uh, separate 
all the recyclables at home, right? So um, those are the uh, contributing to the uh, recycling of uh, plastic um, uh, by household. And uh, uh, EPR uh, usually focusing on uh, recycling of waste material, but other waste management programs and policy are also very important to effectively uh, implement the EPR system, such as uh, the producer must uh, uh, make uh, those products with eco-design, uh, easy recyclability, and also source separation is also important. So source separation guideline, or landfill tax, or uh, installation tax, etc. So. Uh, those are the uh, all key uh, uh, key uh, uh, program to support uh, EPR uh, system. Here in Jeju, uh, uh, there are a good source of separation uh, uh, practice of uh, recyclable. Uh, you, know, you can see uh, 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 papers and plastic uh, bottles and food waste and uh, uh, clothing and all uh, kind of recyclable uh, uh, separated by a uh, household. And uh, even you can see a very uh, good uh, 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 convenient uh, uh, um, uh, recycle center available around the Jeju Island. And uh, this is one of the good example uh, for uh, uh, the uh, uh, implementing uh, EPR system for plastic waste. And uh, here in, um, uh, in, in Korea, there are usually uh, four uh, different plastic items separated at household. Uh, you have pet bottles and uh, plastic packaging uh, sheet and uh, vinyls and plastic uh, the uh, uh, polystyrene foam and mixed uh, plastic uh, item. Those are the four items usually source separated and then once they, uh, those are collected uh, recycled items uh, are processed by sorting and, and recycling facility and converting into the uh, 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 construction material and recyclable uh, pallets, and, and then uh, uh, also the uh, some photo frame, etc. And uh, this is uh, one uh, example uh, for um, pet bottles consumption and, and recycling statistic over the 15 years. And as you can see, uh, in 2003, is is a uh, uh, keep increasing of pet butter uh, uh, consumption over the years. And as of 2019, more than 3,000 tons of pet butters uh, were consumed. And then uh, out of that consumption, about 80% were collected and recycled uh, by uh, uh, EPR system, as you can see. And uh, this is a whole uh, pet bottles uh, recycling uh, process uh, from uh, uh, source separation and sorting and recycling and all the pet bottles uh, can be converted into the uh, pet fibers in you know, closing and, and the film and, and even uh, bottle to bottle recycle uh, can be, uh, can be uh, achieved. And this is the uh, um, uh, material flow of uh, pet butter in Korea uh, in 2019. And uh, uh, from um, uh, about uh, pet butter, uh, 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 310,000 ton coming into the uh, market and then collected uh, this March. And then usually much of uh, uh, used butter collected and, and recycled. Uh, as of uh, 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 different uh, uh, products. And then uh, here, as you, as you, you can see, incineration and landfilling is a very uh, minimal, so very small amount of uh, 
uh, uh, use the pet butters uh, uh, going into the uh, uh, landfilling and, and installation. This is another also uh, common um, uh, plastic item here in Korea. You have, you have uh, like um, uh, polystyrene foam and box you know, by online shopping or, or you have uh, all the mailbox. And then this uh, 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 polystyrene foam or is separate uh, at household and then collected about 52,000 ton of uh, uh, used polystyrene foam and converting into the uh, uh, recycle uh, pellet and uh, construction materials and photo frame and then consumer uh, uh, product. And uh, uh, so this, uh, by EPR system, there, is a, there has been a continuing uh, increasing uh, of uh, recycling. Uh, as of 2019, about uh, 900,000 ton of uh, plastic materials uh, were recycled uh, here in Korea by EPR uh, system. And uh, uh, over, the, over the more than 15 years, recycling keep increasing, but on the other hand, uh, incineration and landfilling uh, keep uh, decreasing over time. And also, this, uh, um, uh, by recycling uh, plastic uh, uh, material um, uh, can, can, can be a, a good economic value. Uh, as of 2019, it's about more than 300 million U.S. dollars. 300 U.S. dollars, uh, that's uh, uh, economic value by recycling. Even, even this uh, plastic uh, recycling can create uh, a job or employ uh, uh, annually. Uh, as of uh, 2019, it's about annually uh, three, 300, uh, uh, 3,500 uh, 3, uh, jobs uh, by this uh, recycling activity, plastic recycling activities. And uh, in summary, in summary, this uh, by EPR system, we have uh, good key lessons that we can uh, share. Uh, this is, these are the f uh, five successful factors. First, Government has a very strict, uh, very robust uh, legal framework, you know. And uh, the second one is a clear uh, target uh, policy. Which item we should include in the EPR system? What kind of recycling rate we need to achieve? And then uh, there is also an integrated plastic waste management system from source separation uh, up to, uh, to uh, uh, recycling or treatment. And these are the whole uh, integrated approach that we take. And these are also important. Also, all the stakeholders should participate uh, to, to effectively implement the EPR system from consumers, from uh, local government, and uh, private recycling sectors, and producer, those, those are the, all the uh, key players are very important uh, for, 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 uh, uh, for um, to implement the NPR uh, system. And uh, uh, there is uh, also performance check every year. They monitor and check how uh, it works and what kind of uh, uh, performance uh, uh, is doing. And uh, these are the uh, uh, good uh, lessons that we can uh, uh, share. And uh, for, from the global prospect, uh, still um, uh, current plastic waste management is heavily relying on linear economy with limited uh, plastic circularity. So as Dr. Uh, uh, Shreda mentioned uh, before, uh, Asia, uh, especially Asia region, is the, the most polluted area. Uh, uh, with uh, plastic in the world. So uh, we should come up with uh, uh, the better uh, a solution and, and, and then uh, make a, a sustainable uh, plastic waste management. So um, in, order to, in order to achieve a plastic circular economy, 
there are two, I think, uh, concepts. The, the right hand side is, uh, is uh, a fossil fuel plastic for circular economy. Right now, there is a very limited uh, recycling, uh, reuse, so we have to keep uh, uh, circulating this uh, plastic by chemical recycling and, and reuse and, and other uh, advanced material uh, recycling technology. The other hand, on the, on the, on the right hand side, uh, there is a, a bioplastic for circular economy. We should also, um, uh, in the long run, we have to, uh, to, to replace uh, fossil fuel-based uh, plastic with uh, bioplastic. This uh, bioplastic can be degraded uh, by microorganism or, 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 or composting or microbiological uh, 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 activities. So uh, these are the two, uh, two key uh, 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 sectors uh, are very uh, uh, important in the future. Um, and in Korea, uh, 2021, last year, we, uh, we announced uh, Korea Circular Economy Action Plan, and then packaging and plastic uh, are, the, are the key area, key sectors for establishing uh, a circular economy uh, in Korea, I think. And uh, so those other uh, uh, sectors will be very important. Um, and uh, as Dr. Shreta mentioned, that uh, uh, regulatory framework and the technological uh, development and economic conditions and social factor, those are the, should be integrated and then should be coordinated so that uh, 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 toward the uh, 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 circular uh, economy. So Korea should step up and play a key role of solving plastic pollution, not only in, in, in Korea, but also in Asian country by transferring knowledge and, 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 and then uh, build uh, uh, the uh, uh, capacity buildings as a part of international cooperation. So this uh, uh, Jeju Plus Forum is, a, is, a, is a one of the good examples uh, uh, to, to address uh, how to solve plastic waste uh, in Asia and, and in the world. I think uh, uh, we can talk and we can build a more international partnership uh, with, uh, uh, between Korea and other uh, ASEAN country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, prof uh, Professor Chang. First of all, I would like to give uh, <laughs> deep thanks uh, for <laughs> keeping the time very punctually. All right. Okay, then uh, uh, let me summarize his presentation. Uh, his presentation, I think, uh, can be summarized uh, Five point. The first one, uh, he introduced what the uh, EPR is a concept and as a means to manage waste. The second uh, one was he introduced plastic management by EPR system in Korea uh, in relation to its history, recycling, target rate how EPR works, EPR supporting program, uh, source separation by household collection and recycling of plastic by EPR uh, and so on. And the third thing he introduced was the achievement of plastic waste by EPR in Korea in terms of recycling trends growth of economic value, job creation. And the next, uh, he uh, introduced six key lessons learned by EPR in Korea. Finally, he emphasized the necessity for international cooperation, 
particularly uh, in relation to international cooperation, uh, he provided a desirable paradigm how to approach the uh, international e cooperation. Yeah. Once again, thanks a lot for your presentation. Next uh, speaker, we go to uh, uh, Ms. Emendna from Indonesia. We can meet her on screen. Uh, then uh, Ms. Emendna, uh, she is assistant professor at Environmental Engineering College, Bandung Institute of Technology, Indonesia. Uh, then uh, she is serving as a resource person for several Indonesian ministers and uh, companies. The topics of her presentation uh, is current effort and challenges for plastic waste production in Indonesia. Uh, Ms. Amend, are you ready? Yes. Uh, oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. Please keep the time uh, given to you, 15 minutes. This is very important for running this session. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Chair Daewoon, for a, a short introduction of me. Uh, now it's 8.50, right? So my time is 9.05 <laughs> in Indonesian time. Uh, let me share my, my screen. Okay, so first of all, I would like to, uh, to thank the organizers who invited me to join this uh, environmental forum. I am Amanda Sembiring, and I am an associate professor from Environmental Engineering Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering Institute, Technology Bandung. I also work as a, um, a team of national coordinating team for marine debris management in Indonesia. Uh, okay. So I would like to highlight because most of the discussions mentions that uh, plastic pollution is uh, an emerging um, a global risk. That is why we, we, we want to know the magnitude of the problem. I will highlight the, the model of laboratory and underdry, which also mentions that uh, for if we are doing nothing or business as usual based on the, uh, the data in 2015 where the level of waste management compose, uh, correspond to the data for 2015 and the consumer demand for plastic increase with GDP, then you can see in scenario one that it's the number of mismanaged fraction of, of plastic into the environment is increased. And also the generations of plastic waste is also increased. If we compare um, uh, from 2020 to 2016. And in scenario B, if we do something like improving waste management, then uh, with the base of improving uh, the waste management as per GDP, then we can see the improvement, but, but it's only for some part of the world. The other part of the world, we can still see the mismanaged fractions of plastic waste increase. And if we add more effort, to, uh, to reduce the plastic usage, then in scenario C, we can also see uh, uh, the reduction in plastic demand per capita with fractions plastic in municipal um, solid waste kept it at 10% at 2020 and 5% by the 2040. And the waste management gradually improved it like in scenario B, we can also see in some part of the world, um, there is an insignificant 
reduction of mismanaged fraction. So this is an alarming model, though we know it's, it depends on the granularity of the data. But again, this is a good example how we can predict what's going on if we do nothing about this plastic uh, pollution. Because knowing the magnitude of the problem is also important. Uh, there are some literature mentioned about the, uh, the and modeling about the, uh, the plastic leakage. And for Indonesia, if we looking at the literatures, there are, of course, it's, there are differences of, of findings. However, uh, there are some of literatures and studies showing a, um, a similar range because we need um, a baseline uh, number so that we know what to start and we can project into what our target is. So based on the more coherent study, and thanks to the, our um, um, a partnership with the, the bank, then we decide, the Indonesian government decide uh, the metrics leakage for Indonesia in 2018 is around uh, 200,000 to uh, 600,000 uh, ton per year. So this is the baseline. Uh, this is like a, uh, the starting point when we want to achieve how much, how many reduction we need and what our governments want to do. So based on that metric, uh, we also see whether other, um, other measures can also be part of uh, the solutions. So we are looking at the first one, looking at the, the current regulation is Indonesia. Of course, there is no such specific regulations related, targeted specific to plastic waste. However, uh, as we already alarm about the, um, um, the challenges, uh, the problems, the plastic waste problems, then the uh, Indonesian government also developed a presidential decree number 83-2018, which uh, regarding the national plan of action for combating marine litter from 2018 to 2025. And in the meantime, there are also other regulations also developed uh, and enact based on what we think will be also part of the solution to achieve the target, including the um, minister, environmental ministerial uh, decree related to the semi EPR, I think. It's not completely comprehensive EPR, but we already have the regulation regarding on this. Okay, so based on the presidential decree 83 2018, Indonesian government's developed a national action plan to combat marine litters. It consists of five strategies. Strategy one uh, included improving behavior change. The strategy one, to name a few, it includes the national movement to raise awareness of negative impact of marine plastic debris for ecosystem and health. And it's also including the national movement to raise awareness of solid waste management. And it also includes the national movement campaign on waste management and marine debris. In strategy two, uh, the national governments uh, announced reducing the land-based leakage. So in the, uh, this program, to name a few, it's include install and equipment like interceptor and trust boom at the water bodies. It's also support the upstream industry to produce degradable plastic, including biodegradable or thermodegradable plastic. And it's also include the support the pilot and development of waste to energy, and also improving and development of material recovery facilities. As, as 
as we see the alarming uh, literature from um, Labrador and Arundhati, though we know it's only including the land-based source, our governments already recognize the, the important part of uh, the sea-based sources. So it's included in our strategy number five. It's include the coastal and sea waste management. To name a few, um, the, uh, the program include the development of reception facilities at the port, solid waste infrastructure at the port and the beaches and small islands. And strategy number four is enhancing funding mechanism, policy reform and law enforcement. And to name a few for this program, there are a diversification of source of funds, which is included blended investment. And lastly, the strategy number five is research and development. We are focusing on um, a lot of study regarding uh, how to make the plastic more uh, sustainable, how, what about the degradable plastic and other study related to the impact of microplastics into the environment. Based on these five strategies, then our governments, Indonesian governments, optimists, up until 2021, we can reduce the plastic leakage into the ocean for about 28.5%. How can we achieve the 28.5%? It's based on what uh, the, the strategy already set in the uh, presidential decree number 83, 2018. But can we achieve that target to 70% reduction of marine litter by 2025. So the challenge is, will the strategy eventually reach the 70% plastic debris reductions? Or the activity which are already uh, mentioned in the uh, national strategy lead to the reduction of plastic debris? Which activity will contribute more on the forthcoming years is there any means to fasten the target reduction? So the government of Indonesia decide that this is not an, a dead document. It should be an active document. So every year, annually, we monitor which target can, uh, which already achieved and which one is not. So it means that we actively, annually revising our national action strategy. So how can we revising the national action strategy for example do we 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 achieve the reduce and substitute plastic usage to prevent the consumption for more than 1 million ton uh, per year what about the redesign plastic product and packaging for use and high value of recycling do we achieve that is there any design that it can back to 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 the manufacturers and use the high a high value material for recycling. Can we achieve the target of to increase 90% to 84% by 2025 uh, 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 the collection system in Indonesia? Uh, what, are, what are the challenges if we not meet the target yet up until the 2021? And we also have already set a target that we double the current recycling capacity to additional like 975,000 ton per year. Some of the target can be achieved, but some others haven't achieved yet. So, so we are looking at the, the root of the discussions. Of course, we are looking at the, as researchers and the technical assistant team, we are looking at the literature's um, best practices from other countries and et cetera. There is a lot of um, um, recommendations how to reduce plastic pollutions like uh, the, the, this literature. However, we come to, uh, to an idea that uh, we are looking at, if we reflect to the human being characteristic, as human, we drive by fear, needs, and value. So if you fear 
uh, if you fail to be sent to the jail, then the command and control of regulation can drive you. If the industry wants to reduce the cost of future non-compliance to the environments, then the industry needs to deal with the waste management. Or, or, but value and moral compass can also drive someone to, uh, to act. So based on that, we looking at all <laughs> the literature best practices over the world, and we see education, awareness rising, regulations, economics, the three instruments is not enough. We need technological interventions. Previous speakers also mentioned about uh, the important part of technology, including the e EPR scheme or circular economy movement. But part of that, um, individual actions, national action is not also enough. We need collaborations. So what we think, uh, the, it, the idea of our governments is try to, to do more partnerships, not only to, 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 in, to finance and to invest in, in the uh, national action plan, but we think we can also share the idea of our government, how we deal and achieve the target by 2025 to other neighborhood country. So partnership uh, for all the stakeholders, including private, philanthropics, or developments um, 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 uh, bank, I think it's also part of these um, but, uh, important uh, actors to, to achieve what Indonesian government uh, target. So I think this is my last presentation. So this is the other ongoing study because what we think, because it's an active document. So we keep revising the, uh, the programs every year. So there are also a study on levy and tax, whether it's, it's, it's for plastic, whether it's also applicable for Indonesia, whether the VAT subsidy for collections um, um, uh, fee is also part of our context in Indonesia. And also we want to revise the retribution and collection fee scheme. And also we, we try to increase the number of uh, single use plastic ban for uh, in city and regency levels. We also to see that there's also a problem with coordination among the central governments and the, a, uh, the, the local governments. So we need to, to revise the regulations, how the connection between the central governments and the locals until uh, 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 local governments. Uh, technology driven, of course, is part of it, education and awareness. And lastly, of course, it's not going to happen if we are not partnership with other um, with other stakeholders, uh, uh, our uh, neighborhood country, because it's not only part of the, the discussions, though we know 80% is coming from the land-based source, but we see also there's a challenge to the, the movement, uh, illegal movement of plastic from other country to others. I think that's um, uh, our sharing for Indonesian part. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Amanda. Uh, okay, the, uh, let me summarize uh, her presentation. Uh, her presentation, I think, uh, can be summarized uh, uh, into three sectors. The first sector is an introductory level. Uh, she introduced the plastic waste generation at the global level. And the, uh, the remaining two sectors uh, are regarded to Indonesia. The first one uh, was the status related to plastic waste in Indonesia including the current model on plastic liquids, regulations of solid waste management, and national action plan responding to marine plastic debris, and national strategy to responding to plastic 
pollution. Finally, as this third sector, uh, she suggested three approaches in Indonesia to plastic pollution. The three conceptual realities were regulation, education, and economics. Once again, thanks a lot, uh, Ms. Uh, Amanda. Next, uh, we are moving on to Ms. Wasaba from Thailand. Yeah. Okay, then uh, from Thailand. Okay, uh, she is the uh, senior professional level at Pollution Control Department, Ministry of National Resources and Environment Thailand. Uh, she has served as a research on national plan on an integrated waste management and marine debris management and so on. Uh, the topics of her presentation is uh, the topics of her presentation is current effort on plastic waste reduction and recycling in Thailand. Okay, we can meet her on screen. Ms. Wasana. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, great to see you even on screen. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, then load your PPT on screen for sharing. So, let me share okay, you. Okay, yeah, we got uh, Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to share uh, our experience to the plastic waste management in Thailand. May I? Yes, sir. You, uh, thank you for introducing myself. Uh, the content for sharing today is I will uh, uh, tell you about the background information for plastic waste management in Thailand and uh, what we have done so far about the plastic waste management in Thailand, including the best practices and challenge, opportunity, and the next step forward for the plastic waste management in, Tha in Thailand. For the background information that you see in the screen, in uh, 2021, we have the uh, solid waste management approximately 25 million ton. Uh, in this amount is uh, uh, waste utilization, 13% uh, is come from the household source separation and come from the waste separation at the uh, material recovery facility. And uh, we have the properly disposed uh, uh, approximately 37% uh, they uh, go to the waste to energy, composting and sanitary landfill for the less uh, 31% is, uh, is not uh, uh, is improperly disposed. Uh, they go to the open dumping, open burning, and uh, some is go to the small incinerator, is, which is uh, the, it, it means the uh, how, uh, greenhouse gas uh, in Thailand. So this slide shows the, uh, the waste composition in Thailand, you can see the most of the organic waste uh, is, is the most, is come from the food waste and that waste. And the second is a uh, recyclable waste, is uh, almost 40%. Uh, uh, this include the gas, the paper, the plastic, the metal and aluminum. And the hazardous waste is uh, just a little bit, but it's uh, uh, really hard uh, to, uh, to address with uh, the hazardous waste. The last is the uh, the general waste is approximately 12%. This is like a textile, diaper, wood, and tie or the litter. And you can see it's the the uh, really important for Thailand is uh, actually uh, beside for the recyclable waste it is the organic waste. Uh, this slide show you the uh, what we do about the a solid waste management in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is uh, developed the policy and plan on the waste management since uh, uh, 
1992 and in the uh, 2015, the roadmap on the solid waste and ha hazardous waste management were developed. Uh, since then, the policy for the specific waste management, such as the uh, plastic waste, the e-waste, uh, were developed. The circular e economy concept uh, were put in place in all hands of the waste management. Uh, we have the new policy in Thailand, which is called the bio-circular and green economy model which is important to develop the, the policy on uh, element and uh, 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 economy uh, development in Thailand. Uh, for the uh, status of the plastic waste uh, in Thailand, we will show you that uh, uh, during 10 years, we average the plastic waste is approximately 2 million tons per, per year and uh, 1.5 million ton per year is uh, go to the recycling as material recycling and uh, uh, recover as energy recovery. The rest of plastic, 1.5 million ton per year is also more in the single-use plastic, uh, such as a plastic bag, plastic cup, and plastic store. This is uh, disposed of the violent uh, sanitary landfill or incinerator and partially accumulate in the dump site. And uh, this is uh, maybe uh, uh, leakage to the development, but uh, we try to do the, the policy and plan and we have the uh, practice to do uh, to deal with the, uh, the list of this plastic. This picture show you the, the roadmap on plastic waste management in Thailand. We developed uh, uh, for the uh, uh, as the uh, framework and direction for the prevention and solving the plastic waste in our country. The key principle for the roadmap, we uh, apply the 3R principle, the life cycle uh, management, and the public-private partnership, and the concept of uh, circular economy, and less possible consumption and production. The, you can see the, the in the picture, we have the three phases of the uh, roadmap. The first phase in 2019 is stop using the uh, plastic capsule, the oxo degradable plastic, and the microbe. And the second phase in 2022, we need to stop the using for food container, plastic store, plastic bag, which take less than 36 micron and the plastic cup is thickness less than 100 micron. And the third phase, uh, we focus mainly on the recycling the target plastic by the 100% by the year 2027 to serve the circular economy concept. This is challenge uh, the, the, the uh, target for the plastic waste in Thailand. After the roadmap is uh, accepted by the cabinet, we uh, propose the, the first phase of the action plan on uh, plastic waste management. Uh, we have the two targets. The first target is reduce and stop using the full type of plastic target by replacement with inventory friendly material. There are four types and the plastic bag. Uh, tin plastic cup and uh, EPA for food container and plastic store. And the second target is we have the target to recycle 50% of the seven type of plastic waste by 2022. And uh, when we uh, evaluate what we have done so far about the action plan, we, uh, we found that is a uh, some of the target did not meet the target for the recycling 50% and the reduce the stop using the four type of plastic is uh, we can stop by using the plastic bag and the tin plastic cup but it's not in the whole country but it is some area uh, uh, such as for the official uh, building and national park we will uh, tell you later. Uh, because due to the end of the uh, this year, the first wave of the action plan uh, will end. So we draft the, 
uh, the second phase of the action plan. So this uh, this plan we uh, uh, emphasize for to reduce the plastic waste to the landfill, and we uh, set the target for the plastic recycling by 100% uh, by the year uh, 2027. And we need to reduce the amount of plastic waste in the sea at least 50% by the year 2027. But this target is uh, still a uh, discard because it's really uh, uh, important to set the baselines for the, the plastic waste uh, in the sea. So uh, we have many programs and projects to do uh, the plastic waste in the sea and we monitor for the, the plastic waste. This leakage to the element and uh, last, is we target the plastic waste management tools are introduced in the action plan, such as the EPR scheme, the plastic product standard, and the database. And uh, we need uh, to uh, use the digital platform for the recycling and collection system for the waste uh, to collect and recycling and to serve as the EPR scheme. The, uh, the measure for the second phase of the plastic waste is uh, we try to uh, uh, producing the eventually friendly product and we uh, reduction the use of the single use plastic at the consumption process. And we will uh, uh, concern and uh, for the post consumption plastic waste management and after we use the, the plastic, we need to uh, 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 set the standard and facility for the uh, waste management or the collection point for the uh, re recycling material to send to the, the recycling factory. And the last one for the uh, this sec uh, the second phase is the sea waste management. We try to work with the other department uh, to do the set the collection system for the the community who's who's uh, located near the uh, near the the river or the the sea uh, to do the collection point and develop the marking gear system. The best practice uh, for the uh, plastic waste management in Thailand, uh, you can see uh, pollution control department uh, will uh, together with the uh, all stakeholders, including the government sector, the private sector, uh, uh, set the program and we work together uh, uh, to address the plastic uh, waste management. The first you can see, uh, we uh, reduce the plastic capsule while coupled with the five major drinking water uh, producer to stop using the plastic capsule for drinking water bottle since the 1st of April uh, 2018. And besides this, uh, to address the microplastic, uh, the microbead plastic, the fruit and nut uh, administration issued the notification uh, to prohibit the uh, cosmetic that uh, uh, they produce and import containing the plastic microbead we uh, prohibit since the, the 1st of January uh, 2020. And the same year, uh, uh, our ministry cooperated with the department store, the supermarket and the convenience store to stop using the plastic bag since the 1st uh, January. This is the, is the big campaign in Thailand. Uh, and now uh, the supermarket and the uh, department store and convenience store, they don't give uh, the plastic for free. Uh, so this is the, uh, next is the one important uh, campaign that we uh, reduce the single use plastic. We uh, cooperate with the uh, government agency Restaurant and food delivery. Excuse me, Ms. Uh, Asana. Yes. Sorry for interrupting you. Time is yes. yeah, time approach closing this session. So you have just uh, one minute. 
Oh, then, okay. Yeah, yeah, we have the uh, one more speakers. Okay. Then please yes. uh, close your presentation in one minute. The whole time uh, left only 15 minutes. All right. That's, so uh, I, I would like to share you about the challenge and opportunities for the, the plastic waste in Thailand. As uh, we uh, we need the policy and plans on the, the plastic waste management, and we try to do the incentive about the how to how to change behavior for the, the customer to reduce the plastic waste, and for the uh, next step. Uh, forward for the plastic waste uh, in Thailand, we need to uh, study and draft the law and regulation on plastic waste management. We try to do the circular economy or the EPR on packaging waste management in Thailand. And we need to uh, determine the waste type of the, the final disposal. If we need to produce the, the packaging or one kind of the packaging, we need to do what they go to recycling or they need to go to the composting so the bio uh, uh, bio plastic may be considered in Thailand. So as you know for the established uh, policy and plan uh, uh, according to the new international legally binding instrument on plastic waste management, I think it's uh, in uh, our uh, region in Asia Pacific uh, need to do the the uh, the plastic circular uh, society uh, for uh, our region to uh, all member state to uh, address the plastic pollution and Thailand will uh, cooperate with all uh, member state and Philippines, uh, Indonesia, uh, South Korea to do the, the uh, new uh, legally binding instrument in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Osan. I'm really sorry for uh, pushing you. That was not my own willingness due to the time press given to us. Uh, once again, I'm very sorry for having pushed you. Okay, then we do not have the, uh, enough time to summarize her presentation. Uh, so, because only uh, 12 minutes left uh, until closing this session. So uh, I would like to move on to the last speaker. Uh, last speaker, uh, the Juvenia from Philippines, but from Philippines, but nothing uh, has been informed to me about the speaker. Yeah. Just what I have got uh, uh, is, the name is Juvenia Serapin, and the position is UNESCO TBC. The topic of presentation is waste management for preventing the destruction of biodiversity in Philippines. That's all uh, I have got from the organizing committee. Juvenia. Uh, good morning. Oh, Anaya, hello. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, before you start, uh, I have one thing uh, to notify you. Uh, due to the uh, uh, the time given to us, only uh, sorry, uh, only the uh, ten minutes left uh, for your presentation. Uh, okay. Would you please load your PPT on screen, and we have to close your presentation at 11.40, 10 minutes left. Thank you very much. Uh, um, okay, go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, may we request the secretary to please uh, share the presentation? Yeah, okay, we got yes. your PPT. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, uh, my name is uh, Javinia P. Sarafi. I'm currently the OIC Chief of the Solid Waste Management Division of the Environmental Management Bureau uh, in the Philippines. So I will be presenting the updates on solid waste management in our country. 
Uh, so we have our law, the Republic Act Number no. Nine Zero Zero Three, and uh, it is um, the the act that uh, will provide systematic and comprehensive and ecological solid waste management program for the implementation in our country. Next. So uh, I guess similar to other uh, our countries, other countries. Uh, yes, po kindly next. We follow this uh, inverted pyramid, which is uh, we uh, emphasize on waste reduction, waste avoidance, uh, waste reuse, recycling. This is our ideal, our target, I guess, for all the countries in the world. Uh, we would like on solid waste management to emphasize and properly implement a waste avoidance, uh, waste reduction, and recycling. Uh, next slide, please. So in the Philippines, uh, Republic Act Number no. 9003 specified the goals or spe specified the roles of the local government units in the implementation of solid waste management. So for the segregation of the biodegradable and the recyclable waste, uh, it is supposed to be the function of the cities and municipalities. And then for the... Uh, I mean, for the biodegradable and the recy recyclable waste, it should be the function of the barangay or the lowest uh, LGU level in our uh, country. And then uh, for the special waste or the household hazardous waste, and then the, the residual waste should be the function of the city and municipal level. Next slide, please. So uh, at the national level, uh, at our institutional mechanism, uh, we have uh, the National Solid Waste Management Commission that is tasked to provide uh, the policies, to prescribe the policies uh, in the implementation of solid waste management. And they are also tasked to approve the solid waste management plans of local government units that should emphasize on waste avoidance and waste recovery. Uh, next slide, please. And at the moment, we have um, around 1,592 uh, solid waste management plans approved. And that is 71% of the local government units in the country. But still, the challenge is in the implementation. Uh, it is good to have um, a very comprehensive plan. But the, really, the outcome and the output on the um, proper waste management is what we aim for. Next slide, please. So in support to the management of uh, plastic wastes, we have initially um, have uh, two items uh, under non-environmentally acceptable products, which are the plastic coffee stirrer and the plastic soft drink straw. So these are only two small um, items, so small plastic waste, but um, uh, it's very difficult to um, engage or to... to to have the approval of the industry on banning of these types of waste. So, uh, but however, uh, we have to push for the banning of these two types of plastics uh, as our initial uh, non-environmentally acceptable products. Next slide. And then um, the National Solid Waste Management Commission also uh, identified several single-use plastics as non-environment or some, some single-use plastics as unnecessary. So uh, we have the plastic cups, the plastic drinking straw, the coffee stirrer, the spoon, plastic forks, plastic knives, and the plastic uh, thin film sandal bags. So at the moment, uh, the Department of Science and Technology in the Philippines is currently conducting a life cycle assessment of the plastic uh, utensils, the spoons, forks, and knives, and the um, plastic labo or the single-use uh, plastic bag, uh, like here in the photo, so that uh, once it was identified as an environmentally acceptable product, we will again be conducting a public consultation on the phase-out schedule of these products. So again, this will be a very challenging um, effort uh, for the country. Next slide, please. We also have the support to the implementation of the National Plan of Action. Uh, previous slide, please. Uh, support to the implementation of the National Plan of Action for the Prevention, Reduction, and Management of Marine Litter. So uh, the NPOML uh, has a vision of a Philippines 
free of marine litter through shared responsibility, accountability, and participatory governance and an overarching goal of zero waste to Philippine waters by 2040. So that will be an, a very ambitious goal. However, uh, we have to strive to, uh, if we are going to protect the environment, we have to strive to implement this uh, strategies under this goal. So under the NPOMML, we have uh, several um, strategies to be implemented, including a very important, the National Marine Litter Baselining. Um, currently, we, have, we don't have any uh, very, um, a very comprehensive information on the plastic leakage, the accuracy of the plastic leakage, and the, the, the really the amount of plastic products that are being produced and disposed. So uh, we have the one important uh, strategy is the National Marine Litter Baselining, and then circular economy and sustainable consumption and production mainstreaming, recovery and recycling enhancement, collection and disposal safeguards, shipping and fisheries waste control, clean up of riverine and marine environments, and then we also have the policy and enforcement strategy, social marketing and communication, sustainable financing and resource allocation and strengthening local action. So these are very important strategies to be implemented in order to uh, fully achieve the goal of the National Plan of Action uh, for the prevention, reduction, and management of marine litter. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, next slide. So these are photos of the launching, the national launching and the uh, ongoing uh, simultaneous regional launching uh, for the period of uh, July to October uh, in all the 16 regions in the country. Next slide, please. So as part of our uh, support to the NPOA ML, we also provide the equipment to local government units in the country for the management of the plastic residual waste. So uh, we provide that plastic molder for the conversion of um, plastics into chairs, to school chairs. Uh, next slide, please. We also um, uh, provide uh, financial support to LGUs in uh, the National Capital Region and Region 3, which is part of the Manila Bay Region, uh, in the installation of this trash trap. So at the moment, this uh, project is um, in the building stage uh, to identify the, the service provider for the um, development and construction of these uh, trash, uh, trash traps. And then for the next slide, please. Uh, we also provided um, for the management of biodegradable waste and uh, management of greenhouse gas. We also provided uh, biogas, uh, bio waste shredders and composers to local government units in the country. And then uh, as part of solid waste management, as part of an integrated solid waste management, next slide please, we are also providing assistance to local government units in the identification of possible sites for sanitary landfills. We need sanitary landfills as disposal facilities for residual wastes. Next slide please. So these are just some photos of the assistance to LGUs in the identification of disposal facilities. Next slide please. And then uh, this photo uh, illustrates our uh, uh, development of feasibility study for the clustering of uh, LGUs for common disposal facility. Next slide. Uh, the Philippines, uh, the Solid Waste Management Division and the EMB also provide assistance to the LGUs in the design of SLFs. We also implement the Solid Waste Enforcement and Education Program, which aims to um, monitor the unclean sites in the public places and mobilize these uh, local government units to clean up these uh, unclean, unclean sites. So uh, currently we have 300, uh, we call them environmental monitoring officers that are conducting the monitoring and mobilizing the barangays or the local government units in the clean up activities. Next slide, please. So these are uh, some photos of the unclean and clean up operations. And uh, next slide, please. Next slide. I'm almost done. 10 slides only. Um, 
this is uh, one of our innovation in the Bureau is the um, development of on online system where we can upload the reports of these environmental monitoring officers. And then the local government units uh, are being capacitated to respond uh, by using also this um, IIS, the Integrated Information System of the Bureau. Okay, next slide, please. So we can also map here the uh, unclean and clean up sites. Next slide, please. And of course, we have the availability of our um, online system uh, database. Next slide, please. Okay. So uh, based on our um, data center, our current data, we have around 61,000 tons of solid waste that are being generated in the country daily. So um, based on our study, we have around 11% of the recyclable materials are plastic waste and some 7% um, uh, of the residual wastes uh, that are being disposed in the landfills are also plastic. So we have around 7,300 uh, plastic waste that are being generated in the country. And the problem is in the management, the problem is in the um, recovery of this, uh, this waste, this plastic waste, which are also resources. So the next slide, please. And uh, based on our data, we have uh, around 276 sanitary landfills where we can dispose the residual waste, including some plastic waste. And 525 uh, local government units, or 30%, only 30% of the LGUs have access to this uh, proper disposal facility. So we would know uh, that the remaining 70% would be disposing where? In the dump sites or um, burning their wastes. So uh, these are the really the challenges that we are um, encountering right now. And uh, next slide, please. But uh, last year, we have this milestone. We were able to close all the illegal dump sites, and hopefully they will not reopen. Um, but uh, our challenge now is the proper rehabilitation of these uh, illegal dump sites. Next slide. Yeah, excuse me, Ms. Javinia. Would you please okay. move on to concluding remark? Okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. have okay. remaining... Okay, so next slide, please. So we can see that uh, we have only 39% of the materials recovery facility that are here uh, in the country uh, to recover this plastic waste. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, move on to the next slide. So with the approval of the APR, the Extended Producer Act of 2022, uh, it's our milestone in the implementation of the management of plastic waste. It is an uh, act institutionalizing the extended producer responsibility on plastic packaging waste, amending for this first course, the ESWM Act of 2000. Next slide, please. So in this act, uh, next slide, we have the obliged enterprises. So they shall refer to the product producers that are required to implement an EPR program. So this becomes mandatory on the part of the plastic producers. Product producers are obliged to implement EPR and this, this article uh, shall refer to large enterprises that generate plastic packaging waste. So for the next slide, please. This is the timeline for the implementation of pro the program. The following targets for the recovery of plastic packaging uh, food footprint generated during the emergency preceding year. So by uh, December 31, 2023, 20% of the plastic <coughs> product should be uh, recovered. And then by the end of 2028, it should be 80% of the plastic produced by the manufacturer should be uh, recovered. So thank you very much. That is the last slide. Uh, mm. Thank you, uh, Ms. Chivini. Uh, we have no time to summarize her presentation, <laughs> okay. Then uh, we finished the uh, first, uh, first part of this session, uh, presentation by five speakers, and uh, we are moving on to the second part of this session, uh, panel discussion. We uh, have two uh, uh, panelists. The one from uh, one, uh, the professor Yi Sung Hee from um, Department of Environmental Engineering, Gyeonggi University, uh, Korea. Uh, currently, uh, uh, he is serving as a police advisory member 
Ministry of Environment, South Korea, and so on. The, uh, another uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Hans from uh, UNESCO, I think head, uh, headquarter office. Uh, he is uh, the uh, senior program specialist for water and environmental sciences in Jakarta, uh, Indonesia. Before uh, he taking the current position, uh, he has worked at UNESCO in Beijing office and other division, uh, such as national sciences uh, and so on. So uh, only we have 15 minutes before we closing this session, so uh, please the five minutes. Then uh, uh, I think uh, you can give some uh, questions or comment on the presentation. Uh, and uh, if you have some uh, different idea, on, uh, then you can uh, suggest uh, your idea. Okay, thank five you. Five minutes, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Sung Hee Ri in Gyeonggi University. Also, I was served as the president of Korea Basel Forum. And thank you for every speakers. And speakers, five speakers mentioned about the international cooperation. It's very important. So I'd like to emphasize international cooperation and suggestion for solving plastic waste problems between Korea and Asia. Next one, please. Okay, this is the Asian and the plastic waste problems. It is very, very serious. It's more than you anticipate. So next one, please. So also UNEP, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 SDGs. But among 17 SDGs, Seven SDGs are related to plastic waste. Next one, please. So international cooperation is very important. I like to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mention about the three areas. First one is global issues and trend. The second one is legal framework. Uh, registration and for recycling, and third one is capacity building. That is infrastructures and techn technologies. Before I mention about the three, three areas, it is necessary to consider the current situation and barriers of plastic waste management in each country. For the implementation of international cooperation, it is necessary to carry out the resources project on policy transfer, forest uh, framework, and capacity building to overcome the relevant uh, limitation. That is very important to make the research work between Asian countries and to build the manpower, also technology transport. International partnership is also made by the research work. So that is proceeding by large scale or small scale. That is, come to the parties to parties sustainably. University to university, also institution and institution. And student and student. That is parties to parties partnership. That is very important. It is came by its researcher, not technical transport. So this is global issues and legal framework and capacity building to implement the UN SDGs. 
And global issues, one is SDG, the other one is transboundary movement of plastic waste. This is 10 Asian countries in 2006, 2016, the import and export, you can see net amount of plastic waste is negative. That means it's Asian country did not receive the plastic waste. But 2020, the import is much higher than export. <coughs> that is the net amount is plus. So a lot of plastic waste go to Asian countries. Sometimes it is not legal. Legally transportation. That is the pro uh, problem. So cooperation is very important. Another one is the plastic waste reduction. I like to skip this one. And legal framework is awareness. I think there are some speakers mentioned about the awareness. That is very important also. The capacity building is pre-consumption. And that is very important. This is related to produ producers and manufacturers to produce the uh, manufacturing goods. In Korea, we have the several things in here. That is, is the uh, plastic bottles the same colors, not different colors. Also, items is the same materials, it, not different materials. And they uh, take out the labels, so it is easy to recycle. So using the bioplastic, and then finally I got the post-consumption. So that is make the material recycling and chemical recycling and reuse. Those are work together between Asian countries international cooperation. I think, I hope that this forum, <coughs> Jeju Plus Environment Forum, should be initiative or platform to share the knowledge and transport information. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Professor Lee. <laughs> OK, uh, we have. <laughs> 10 minutes before closing this session. Okay, uh, next we are moving on to Mr. Hans from UNESCO office, Jakarta. We can meet him on screen. Thank you very much. I oh, hope you can hear okay, me. Okay, we got you. All right. Yeah, just uh, two minutes, please. All right. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you are able to hear me well? Yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you all uh, for this opportunity to, to close the, the, the discussion, as it were, today. I'd like to pick up from uh, Dr. Rees, uh, Professor Rees' point on international uh, cooperation and say a few words without a presentation this time, just words, and very much reflecting on what has been said uh, this morning. I, I gave it the, the sort of overall headline that it's a matter of integration. What happens on land affects what happens at sea, and what happens at sea directly affects our lives and our livelihoods on land. What happens in one country affects other countries, and what happens in the realm of governance affects the life choices made by people at the local level. And what happens locally has the potential to have a major impact if it's given the visibility and the opportunity to show. So how do we integrate all of this across these different sectors and levels and across the countries of the region? I was impressed with Dr. Zhang. He showed us a very effective EPR system in Korea with mandatory recycling and the really comprehensive progress being made. But this comprehensive solution adopted in Korea, can we directly transfer that to the wider region? We have challenges in legal frameworks, uh, policies, targets, uh, integration of management, degree of participation. These achievements that have been made in Korea, there are barriers to those in the region. We can see that there are limited collection, recycling in place. Uh, Dr. Shreswa highlighted this from, from across the different countries. We can work towards it. And I think the presentations from Thailand and from the Philippines, uh, from Indonesia showed the current action plans that are being implemented and the progress 
that is being made. But maybe in parallel with this progress, moving towards these really comprehensive frameworks, we need parallel initiatives that can help close the gap local initiatives. And I, I mentioned already this point made in, the, in our first presentation from Dr. Schwester about on the ground innovations that are not necessarily being captured, being replicated and adopted at scale. And I think that's a crucial issue. Um, I also really uh, liked the, the point made by uh, uh, Dr. Ementna um, from Indonesia, saying, you know, humans are driven by fear, needs, and, and values, and this relates to how we regulate, uh, uh, how we govern economics, and, and how we provide education. But importantly, we need this input of technological uh, intervention, and we need collaboration. Uh, I like the diagram that she showed, because it's familiar to me. It resembles what we work with in, in UNESCO and in the biosphere reserves, which is a, a diagram that has three principal functions to conserve nature conservation, integrated with development and underpinned by research, innovation, cooperation, networking, and the transfer of technology. And so this is my proposal in conclusion to ensure that we have a better visibility for local initiatives, innovations, and progress. To link these local innovations with the national level, with the regional and global scale, and to connect the way we manage plastic waste with the way we manage biodiversity. And that is an issue we didn't really discuss so much today, even though it was in the title of our, of our session. I would like to propose, and, and of course, since I work with UNESCO, I would like to propose the convening power of these UNESCO designated sites. And I do that with particular reference to Jeju, because we are now in the Jeju Forum, hosted by Jeju, one of the few triple designation sites in the world. It, Jeju is a World Heritage Site, it's a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, it's a UNESCO Global Geopark. So the people of Jeju, the government of Jeju, and the government of the Republic of Korea have all committed across these three different frameworks to work towards sustainability and to make sure that Jeju is the best in the world in the way in what it does. So UNESCO Biosphere Reserves, as well as geoparks and, and, and World Heritage Sites, they have a, they are in a strong position to be a vanguard for innovation, adoption and replication of integrated waste management and biodiversity conservation uh, models. They, because they are places where these multi-stakeholder commitments for sustainability have already been made, where sustainability is giving high visibility through the way the site is branded, through the identity of the site, and we know this in Jeju. Jeju is a very proudly uh, an environmentally oriented uh, island. And of course, because they have to comply with the expectations and regulations that govern their international designation. So we heard today from Korea, from Thailand, from Indonesia, and from Philippines. Uh, these countries are just, if we just look at biosphere reserves, they have nine, five, 19, and three. Uh, so that's 36 locations in these countries that are committed to identifying and pursuing integrated solutions to the harmony between people and nature. And a majority of these sites, if I'm not wrong, are coastal. They include marine areas and they include terrestrial areas. So they are ideally placed to as locations where you can look at integrating the way we manage land and sea. They are linked in regional networks. We have the Southeast Asia Biosphere Reserve Network. They meet every year. We met last year and are going to meet again this year in, in November mm -hmm. to look at prioritizing joint research, capacity development and exchange. So my conclusion, let's consider a new project, a new initiative across the region to identify and document places where we have integrated biodiversity and waste management initiatives in all of these locations and beyond to make sure that these local initiatives are publicized and brought to the attention of decision makers and academia to help them exchange, replicate and scale up where there really is innovation uh, that is relevant, that may not be seen, and to help bridge the gap where they exist between these local actors, between academia, policy and decision makers. I think with that better integration between local, national, regional, between waste and biodiversity, between science, policy, and people, we have a chance at, at, at not proceeding with business mm -hmm. as usual. But I think we have to focus on this uh, idea of integrating. It's a, it's a very difficult 
to make headway if we look at plastics in one sector, biodiversity in another sector, uh, development, uh, economic progress in a third sector. So we need that, that integration. I think we have a, a good potential in the UNESCO designated sites to showcase uh, where uh, advances are being made. With that, there are two minutes left. I will close and thank you very much for your attention and for allowing me to be part of this uh, really exciting session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Hans. Okay, then it's the time for us to close this session. Uh, then the, as uh, we know the theme of this session uh, is the management of plastic pollution and conservation of biodiversity. In relation to this session, we have got a great idea and a valuable uh, suggestions uh, from five speakers and uh, two uh, panelists. So, based on all the contents presented by speakers and uh, panelists, then I think uh, uh, those can be drawn as a concluding remark. Uh, uh, for this session. So, uh, based on my understanding from five speakers and two panelists, uh, the concluding remark can be carved, uh, can be carved uh, three factors, uh, sectors. First one is, why should no plastic pollution this society? So, plastic uh, product is used very intensively from product in everyday life to medical, even uh, aircraft. So, it is inevitable for uh, us to use them, but problem is to use plastic product more than we need. Therefore, it may be true plastic products have improved the convenience of our life, however, threaten the original quality of nature. That may be the crisis of nature. Then, crisis of nature does not end itself. It is linked to the crisis of human existence on the earth because the nature can exist without the humans. However, humans cannot survive without uh, nature. Then, third sectors we can draw from the uh, presentation and the panelists is what strategy will be efficient and effective? That sectors have been uh, suggested and discussed uh, by all of the uh, speakers. So most of the speakers and the panelists emphasized in relation to the uh, strategy, uh, the scientific management of plastic waste emitted by human activities. The uh, typical example is ERP. I think this is a technology-based approach. In addition, other speakers have suggested technology-based approach is very good eh? uh, because we have developed a high level of advanced technology already. However, the uh, social system approach also should be added together with the technology approach. Therefore, the, uh, I think uh, on the basis of the presentation, uh, it is inevitable for us to use plastic. At least two strategies we need. The first one is technology-based, and the second one is system-based approach for weakening the cause generating plastic uh, wasters. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is very significant and a great opportunity. We have uh, some uh, exchange ideas. So finally, I think without, uh, without uh, the active involvement all of us, 
this session could not be successful. Uh, once again, on behalf of the uh, organizing community, I would like to give a deep thanks to everyone involved in this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all of the moderator and all panelists from uh, abroad and uh, dominate. Uh, thank you very much once again for your um, active debate. Thank you once again very much for your heated debate. Thank you. So with this, we'd like to put an end to the first session of Jeju Plus International Environment Forum. Thank you for your presence. From 1 p.m., the opening ceremony will take place, and the luncheon will be served at the Ligia on the same floor. It's a buffet. So for identification, please put your name tag on it. And bon appetit, and please be back at 1 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>